Right now on this special early edition of Apple Valley News Now, Iran launching a missile attack on Israel today. We are tracking the late breaking details. Plus, it is the first day of Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Cadillac Hospital is paying tribute. Also ahead, we are learning more about day one of the new direct flight from PSC to LAX. Stacy. And a beautiful day. Look at the Columbia River. We're going to tell you just how warm it is today and how cool it's going to get. This is Apple Valley News Now Special Edition on your side. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this first day of October. I'm Austin Reed. First up this afternoon, Cadillac Regional Medical Center honoring breast cancer survivors and those who have died of breast cancer. With their 20th annual breast cancer awareness flag raising ceremony at the Regional Medical Center in Richland. Cadillac says it is also a time to serve as a reminder for the importance of mammograph, uh, mammogra mammogram, excuse me, as a key tool to detect breast cancer at its earliest stages. Cadillac says breast cancer is the second most common diagnosis of cancer in women and when and how often to get checked depends on your family medical records. Breast surgeons, radiologists, all for the most part agree that starting at age 40, uh, we're going to be able to capture most cancer. Uh, if you have a family history of breast cancer, uh, if you have a first-degree first relative who's had uh, breast cancer, it's good to talk with your, your family practice uh, doc to decide, is waiting till 40 good or should I start a, a little earlier? Later tonight on Apple Valley News Now primetime after the debate, you will be able to hear from a cancer survivor who shares her story with us. More women in the U.S. are being diagnosed with breast cancer. A new report from the American Cancer Society found cases increased 1% each year from 2012 to 2021. Based on the data, nearly 311,000 women will be diagnosed with invasive breast cancer this year alone. The report did have some good news. The overall breast cancer death rate dropped about 44% between 1989 and 2022. That is largely thanks to advances in treatments and early detection. When broken down by race, black women continue to be more likely to die from the disease, even though they are less likely to develop it. We'll have more on this story coming up after the debate as well. Turning now to our first alert forecast, October has arrived. So our Stacy Lee joining us live from our first alert weather center with a quick check at your forecast. Happy 10th month of 2024, Stacy. There you go, Austin. And we're both sporting pink in honor of the beginning of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What a beautiful day outside. Gorgeous weather. Look at the Columbia River. Kind of wish I was out there right now myself. Let's check out the temperatures. 80 degrees warm. It's a warm day out there. Quite a bit warmer than we were yesterday. Our winds are light but have picked up this afternoon. Our sunset will be at 635. Temperatures elsewhere around the area. Just beautiful 70s and look at Ellensburg. 80 degrees. It's 82 in the Dowels. 70s there and 81 right now in Pendleton. Here's the temperature change in the last 24 hours. We're 17 degrees warmer in Pendleton. Wow, that's quite a jump at yeah, 13 in Tri Cities, 12 in Yakima, but it's not going to last. We're going to start to see a cool down. Now we are dealing with some breezy winds. They picked up this afternoon here in the Columbia Basin down in Hermiston, also through the Ellensburg Kittitas Valley. So to recap tonight, mild breezy winds out there. Cooler and breezy tomorrow. We're going to start seeing some very chilly overnight lows and your weekend warms up. I'll tell you just how cool it's going to get in the next couple of nights and just how warm the weekend is going to be coming up. Austin. All right, Stacy, thank you. Other news and following up on the search for a missing man in Kittitas County. Since Friday, KCSO and Kittitas County Search and Rescue have been searching for 88 year old William Charlie Martin. Martin has dementia and his family says he left home back on September 24th. Since then, trained search teams and resources from Chelan, Pierce, Yakima, Snohomish and King counties, along with Wenatchee Valley Fire, have assisted in the search. If you know anything, call authorities immediately. Connell Fire and Franklin County Fire District run responding to a fire around 1230 this afternoon. 
These are pictures of the scene from the Connell Police Department. It happened on the 3500 block of Hawthorne Street, which is Connell Park Estates Mobile Home Park. Firefighters and emergency personnel responded quickly to contain an RV that was on fire. Officials say one person was injured. Uh, the investigation now ongoing. Earlier today, the Pasco Airport celebrated its first daily nonstop flight to LAX. In the words of airport director Buck Taft, it went great. Taft tells Apple Valley News Now the first flight from Pasco to Los Angeles was a little over half full, which Taft says is good for a Monday. He says the seats, uh, well, it was for a Tuesday. Uh, he says the seats for this flight daily, uh, this daily flight Alaska Airlines has for the rest of the week are now filling up fast. The airport has been uh, working on getting this flight for years. Taft said when the airport meets with Alaska Airlines, this flight was a priority ask. And we know the daily service will work. Um, what Alaska brings is just that additional connectivity and specifically the connectivity into Mexico. And I believe there were several people on the flight this morning that said they were going to Mexico. Taft also says around 48 of the 76 seats on this flight were taken. He also says that this flight is daily. It departs Pasco at 7 a.m. and returns back to Pasco around 10.30 p.m. Developing news now, Iran today firing hundreds of missiles into Israel as a wider war across the Middle East hangs in the balance. This latest attack comes just days after Israel killed the leader of terrorist group Hezbollah, one of Iran's main proxies. ABC's Christiane Cordero is following up and has the latest from Washington. President Biden and Vice President Harris were in the Situation Room during the attack. Iran says it targeted military bases around Tel Aviv with no advance notice given to the U.S. Tonight, missiles pierce the night sky over Tel Aviv, sending the war in the Middle East into a new phase. Sirens give the ominous warning for civilians to seek shelter. Israel's Iron Dome intercepting much of the barrage stretching over the region. An official confirms the U.S. had intercepted some of the incoming missiles as well. IDF spokesperson Daniel Hagari says central and southern Israel were hit. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Tel Aviv. Iran is trying to clearly send a message after its main proxy, Hezbollah in Lebanon, has been nearly decimated by Israel's attacks uh, over the past couple of weeks. Iran takes responsibility for the attack. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard says they focused on security and military targets. And just moments before the attack was a shooting in Tel Aviv that killed at least six people, seven others injured, according to Israeli police, which suspects it was a terrorist attack. And earlier today, the Israeli army announced it began limited ground operations in southern Lebanon, but Hezbollah denied Israel troops had crossed the border. The chaos today follows 11 months of a war largely focused on defeating Hamas in Gaza. Hezbollah and Israel have also been exchanging fire ever since. But the tension there escalated when Israel targeted pagers and walkie-talkies used by Hezbollah operatives. Then a strike on its capital that killed Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah. Iran now calls this now retaliation for several assassinations. Many people, certainly here who are pro-Hezbollah, will say this is payback for Israel. Israel vows there will be consequences for today's attack. U.S. officials say they were briefed on Israel's potential counter before the attack began. But based on what we know now, the attack appears to have been defeated and ineffective. U.S. officials say they're working with the IDF to assess the full impact of this attack, echoing Israel's promise that this will have consequences, but did not elaborate on what that means. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Washington. Back in our region, the ACLU of Washington says they have filed a class action lawsuit against Yakima County, the Department of Corrections and Superior Court. They say it's on behalf of indigent people charged with crimes in the county who don't have an attorney assigned to their case. This has to do with Yakima County's shortage of public defenders. It's an ongoing issue. The ACLU says some people are waiting for more than a month in the Yakima County Jail without having an attorney assigned to their case. The ACLU of Washington State is now calling for the court to remedy the situation as fast as possible. 
Well, the Pasco School District is partnering up with Amentum to boost their STEM programs. Amentum is a premier global technical and engineering service which presented the Pasco School District with a $20,000 check to go towards STEM programs. The money will be used during this 2024 through 2025 school year. PSD says that teachers at each school and grade level will be able to apply to get $1,000 and that'll go towards the STEM program learning in their classrooms. That exposure at a young age is helpful and then of course as students are progressing through their schooling um, those experiences with STEM will help them have opportunities for um, post-secondary school college or um, other training opportunities so we want them to have those experiences so they know what is out there and what's available to them. This is the fourth year PSD has partnered up with the global company. For the past three years, they have donated $15,000 every single year. Amentum also has worked on the Central Plateau Cleanup Company and on waste treatment at the Hanford site. The Yakima County Development Association has received a $30,000 Wells Fargo Foundation grant to fund its Small Business Accelerator program. The program will include business development workshops for business owners to learn financial and digital literacy, marketing, and promotions. The grant is open to about 70 small businesses in Yakima County that are at least two years old and have less than 30 employees. You can find more information about this at YCDA Resources at Choose Yakima Valley. Com. And Heartlinks is opening up a new adult family home in Sunnyside, one of the only facilities of its kind in the Lower Valley. Unlike the apartment or dorm style setup often found in assisted living, the facility is set up to function as a home. There are four bedrooms that can accommodate up to six adults who will share a family activity room, living room, kitchen, bathroom, and outdoor garden. It is staffed by more than seven certified nursing assistants, supervised by a registered nurse and Heartlinks medical director, and residents can start moving in as early as tomorrow. Coming up on Apple Valley News Now, this special edition. Did you see all of the construction equipment at the Benton County Fairgrounds today? Well, there's a reason for that. Plus, Stacy will return. She'll have a look at your full weather forecast. But before we had to break, a quick reminder. Tonight, starting at 5, the first vice presidential debate will be held between J.D. Vance and Tim Walls. The debate starts at 6, but we'll have coverage starting at 5. And we will broadcast the debate in its entirety. Again, coverage starts tonight at 5, right here on Apple Valley News Now. From Apple Valley News Now, here's your two-minute take. Welcome to your two minute take. I'm Jason Valentine coming to you from Lifetime Dental Care in Richland and I have the head honcho with us, Dr. Michael Breyer. Doctor, how are you today? Great, Jason. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Absolutely. Always a pleasure to come here and talk with you. And you know, you've always had the tenet to make people comfortable, take the fear out of dentistry. And you really see that when they enter the building, you uh, make it an effort to make them comfortable. What's the thinking behind that? Well, trying to raise a standard, Jason, on what people's expectations are from sure. dentistry, and then follow that by letting them feel comfortable, not with just how they feel when they come through, but how they're greeted, mm -hmm. um, how our team has many hours of training given to them, and then ultimately, collectively, the, the f over 50 years of experience now that we have with our doctor crew, that they're getting a product sure. that they can be you know, comfortable in. Absolutely, and with this comfortability, I'm sure you see a difference in your patients. They relax a little bit more when they're in here, correct? Exactly. They, they, they mention to us often that they don't feel like they're in a dental office. They're actually in a position where they can get relaxed, uh, think about what they're about to have done and not feel scared about it. Sure. D did you ever have a patient who came in who was petrified of the dentist and you were able to allay their fears? Tell me about that. Um, almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's a lot about uh, previous or past experiences with sure. them and we're trying to overcome that and get them to realize that the dentistry is no longer like that. We can do things remarkably uh, kinder, gentler, mm -hmm. and uh, make them feel better when they leave right. rather than uh, when they came in. And that's what Lifetime Dental Care is all about. So thank you so much, Doctor. Jason, I love having you here. Absolutely. I love right. being here as well. If you are a little trepidatious about seeing the dentist, give these guys a try. That's your two-minute take. 
Thank you for making Apple Valley News Now's Good Morning Northwest and ABC's Good Morning America the most watched morning news on local TV. Now that's good. What's new, what's now, and what's next? Plus, first alert weather every 10 minutes. Apple Valley News Now, on your side. Next live, we celebrate Kelly's birthday. With Sarah Paulson from Hold Your Breath and a performance by The Fray. Tomorrow at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. Josh Cobra, first alert weather on Good Morning Northwest from Apple Valley News Now on your side. Welcome back. If you saw lots of construction equipment at the Benton County Fairgrounds today, no, they are not doing construction. It was just construction day there. Hundreds of high school students gathered to learn about the different areas of construction. Students got to operate heavy equipment like forklifts, diggers, and more. The chapter president of the National Association of Women in Construction was the sponsor for the event. Career Day is also part of a national program. It's um, telling them all different types of areas of construction. We have vendors inside with different unions. We have um, uh, different contractors out here showing off their equipment. And the purpose of it at the end of the day is just to make sure that students know uh, what construction opportunities have and what there is out here. She also says her favorite part of the day was seeing the students' faces light up when they got to try out something they normally would not do on a typical school day. 15 schools attended today's event. Well, more than 20 individuals from the Red Cross Northwest region are on the ground or on the way to support Hurricane Helene recovery efforts. But tonight, the American Red Cross is issuing an urgent appeal for volunteers who are willing to travel this fall to support emergency shelters for major national disaster relief efforts. Interested volunteers are urged to sign up today at redcross.org slash volunteer. Applicants who don't have disaster experience but have supervision, management, or organizational skills and the ability to thrive in a fast-paced, dynamic environment are now encouraged to apply. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Stacy Lee. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful, warm Tuesday afternoon. Lots of sunshine out there. Now, taking a look outside, you see this little bit of haze and some of those winds have picked up in our area. We have an incoming cold front once again, so these warm temperatures are not going to stay, but it's pushing some dust into our air all around the area. So if you're seeing that, that's what you're looking at tonight. Winds right now are light. Our gusts are a little bit breezier. Our sunset at 635 and our humidity at 20%. Let's take a look at those windy breezes around the area right now. Like we said, six miles an hour, but gusting 15 to 20. And we're seeing even heavier gusts and uh, heavier winds in the Kittitas Valley. That's as this cold front starts to push into the area, kind of like we've had the last couple of times. Now, the big news tonight, of course, are the cooler temperatures. It was very chilly last night down in the 30s in most of our area. Look for a few clouds and mild to breezy and gusty winds tonight. Here's the Yakima and Kittitas Valley. We're in the 30s and 40s, so warmer than we were last night, but still on the cool side, about average for this time of year, right around 42 degrees. In the Columbia Basin, we are slightly warmer than we were last night by a good 10 degrees or so overnight. But once again, not going to last. We're seeing 40s and 50s. Look at Hermiston, 50 degrees. Moses Lake and Tri-Cities at 45. Prosser at 43. Foothills of the Blues, much warmer than it was there last night as well, with temperatures up to or, or down to 52 tonight in Walla Walla. 47 for Pendleton. If you remember last night, we were down in the 30s, the lower 30s there, and Dayton at 49. So here's that temperature trend for daytime highs anyway. We're going to see uh, the warm temps today. We hit 80 degrees, and we're going to drop off pretty substantially uh, down on Thursday, even as low as 69 degrees. We stay there for a couple of days, and just in time for your weekend, it's going to warm back up to about average for this time of year with sunny skies and an even warmer day on Monday. Let's plan things out for tomorrow temperature wise. It's going to be chilly in those early morning hours. Look at that. We're going to drop down to about 46 degrees right as you're getting outside 
hitting the bus stop or getting on the road to work. And then we'll gradually warm up. We'll be in the 50s by 9 o'clock. Look for the 60s by the midday. And as you get into the early afternoon, you'll see temperatures hitting the 70s. Similar trend in Yakima, but again, very chilly, dropping down to the lowest temperatures around 8 o'clock in the morning and then a nice climb as you get into the afternoon. So get ready for those cooler days. Big heat wave down below. Cooler air coming off the Pacific is the reason we're going to continue to see those cooler temperatures. For tomorrow, sunny and nice and warm and breezy with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Actually cooler, not sure why that says warmer. And then our future cast is showing a little bit of rain across the Cascades, a few increasing clouds through our area, and then we'll see clearing skies as we get through the rest of the afternoon. Slight chance of rain, mainly in the Kittitas Valley. That'll happen on Friday. Let's take a look at those seven day planning forecasts. Breezy winds, there's those chilly overnight lows on Wednesday and Thursday. For the Ellensburg area, down to 33, almost to the freezing level, breezy with a chance of rain. Tri-Cities looking at some chilly overnight lows once again in the 30s for Wednesday and Thursday night, warming up into the weekend. Walla Walla's got those chilly overnight lows Wednesday night, but much cooler temperatures tomorrow down to 69 degrees. And in Hermiston, we'll see the 70s with a beautiful looking weekend. Once again, those uh, 30 degree temperatures. Did you notice how cool it was last oh night? Oh my Austin? gosh, yes. It was like, burr, I'm not ready cold. I, I know. October came and <laughs> the change happened. There you go. So, all right, thanks, Stacey. Coming up next on Apple Valley News Now at 5, we will bring you the spotlight tonight. It comes from the Yakima School District. Stay tuned. Apple Valley News Now, the official television home of the Seattle Kraken. Craving our world-famous hand-rolled crisp burritos with creamy, bacony, chipotle, smoky goodness? Try our new Smoky Pork Crisp Burrito for a limited time. When you know what you want, anytime is taco time. Paris Walls, Trump Vance. Now tonight, with just weeks to go until Election Day, the vice presidential candidates face each other and face off. Tim Walls, J.D. Vance, the vice presidential debate. The night starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, live with the ABC News event special, The Race for the White House, with David Muir and the ABC News powerhouse political team. Tonight, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Apple Valley News Now is home to top shows from ABC, like Grey's Anatomy, 911, and Abbott Elementary. And we're home to the number one news on television, ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, plus award-winning local news, including the First Alert Weather Team. And we lead the way in sports with NFL Monday Night Football, college football, including the SEC, and just added the Seattle Kraken. We're Apple Valley News Now, proudly serving South Central Washington and Northern Oregon on your side. There's something new on Apple Valley News Now's Me TV, the Seattle Kraken. With the Seattle Kraken, the action on the ice is nonstop. Every hit, every power play, every goal. Watch select Kraken games whole season on Me TV. Seattle Kraken Hockey, sponsored locally by Yakima Federal Savings and Loan. Checking, home loans, savings. Prosser Memorial Health, this is how we care. And Legends Casino Hotel, fun is how we roll. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Coming up tomorrow on Good Morning Northwest, hundreds of students attended today's Tri-Cities Construction Career Day, what they learned and how they'll bring it with them in the future. Plus, Josh will have your weather forecast. We hope to see you here Wednesday morning from 5 to 7. Craving our world-famous hand-rolled crisp burritos with creamy, bacony, chipotle, smoky goodness? Try our new Smoky Pork Crisp Burrito for a limited time. When you know what you want, anytime is taco time.
Well, today is Jimmy Carter's 100th birthday. Carter is now the first president in U.S. history to hit that centennial mark. According to family members, his birthday wish is to vote in the presidential election. The former president entered hospice care in February 2023 after a series of hospital stays. He's also a survivor of brain cancer and liver cancer. Well, switching gears, check this out. It is time for Tuesday's edition of the Spotlight. It comes to us from Yakima Public Schools. October is National Principals Month, and throughout this month, the district will honor principals and assistant principals who make a difference. The district this week is honoring Principal Samantha Howell, who was once a student in the district. They are also honoring Assistant Principal Sydney John for a number of years of service. And a quick reminder, if you have an idea for the Spotlight, send me an email, a read at AppleValleyNewsNow.com. Coming up next, you've got the weather photo of the day. You don't want to miss it. It's a beauty. <laughs> Aren't you just a spoonful of sugar? Young Sheldon, tonight at 11.05, Apple Valley News Now. SoCal Tower, it's some kind of insect. That's peace. Oh, no. That plane's coming right at us. Made it. Made it. Thursday, brace yourself. The riveting 911 three part season premiere event continues. Athena's on that flight, isn't she? She's flying it. Of course she is. Hold on! 911, the three part season premiere event continues Thursday on ABC and stream on Hulu. Apple Valley News Now is home to top shows from ABC, like Dancing with the Stars, The Golden Bachelorette, and the all-new High Potential. And we're home to the number one news on television, ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, plus award-winning local news, including the First Alert Weather Team. And we lead the way in sports with NFL Monday Night Football, college football, including the SEC, and just added the Seattle Kraken. We're Apple Valley News Now, proudly serving South Central Washington and Northern Oregon on your side. Recently, Apple Valley News Now first alert weather forecast weekend thunderstorms. But some viewers told us that their phone app predicted sunshine. Well, the apps were wrong. Trust Apple Valley News Now first alert weather. Always on your side. Welcome aboard the Odyssey. Millions took to the high seas for the exciting, scintillating premiere of Dr. Odyssey. There! Come on. <sighs> and Thursday. Singles wing strap in. Will make your heart race. I've got no pulse. Keep it. Now, stay with me. Dr. Odyssey. New Thursday on ABC and stream on Hulu. You tell lies, you gamble, and yet you never seem to pay a price for any of it. When you're cute like me, rules are just a little different. He's the funniest young genius around. People talk about me behind my back, but it's about how smart I am. Young Sheldon, tonight at 11.05 on Apple Valley News Now. There's something new on Apple Valley News Now's Me TV, the Seattle Kraken. With the Seattle Kraken, the action on the ice is nonstop. Every hit, every power play. Every goal. Watch select Kraken games whole season on Me TV. Seattle Kraken Hockey, sponsored locally by Yakima Federal Savings and Loan. Checking, home loans, savings. Prosser Memorial Health, this is how we care. And Legends Casino Hotel, fun is how we roll. Thank you for making Apple Valley News Now's Good Morning Northwest and ABC's Good Morning America the most watched morning news on local TV. Now that's good. What's new, what's now, and what's next? Plus, first alert weather every 10 minutes. Apple Valley News Now, on your side. Next Live, we celebrate Kelly's birthday. Oh my God! With Sarah Paulson from Hold Your Breath and a performance by The Fray. Tomorrow at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. Welcome back. And our viewer photo of the day, always our fo fi favorite moment. Wendy Van Klinken sent this in, one of my favorite views. White Pass and photo of Mount Rainier. Beautiful. This is what I see when I go skiing, mm -hmm, Austin. Mm -hmm. Notice no snow, so not there yet. But thank you, Wendy, for sharing <laughs> weather photo. You can click that QR code or point your phone at it or go to applevalleynews.com. Let's tell you about the bottom line. We've got mostly dry conditions this week. A slight chance of showers coming to the lower elevation 
elevations Friday, mainly in the Kittitas Valley. We're going to see chilly overnight lows the next couple of nights, 30s and 40s. We're going to have mild and warmer temperatures for the weekend. So if you have any big weekend plans, I would enjoy this beautiful fall weather. I'm enjoying October so far. I am too. Although I just Can't ran out of better. pumpkin spice coffee cream. Oh, Mom. <laughs> we're going to talk about that later tonight. Hey, the debate is next. We'll see you after that. Have a good night.